Mm. That was my old grandfather's family's totem. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got a story that um, where he came to me, right? the frog, with a message to tell me that my baby's son was all right. And when I went to the hospital the next day, I was told that my son nearly died. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But the frog came home, knocked on the front door, and I saw it. And um, then I rang my dad up and told him, and he asked me if the frog was crying. I said no. And he said, um, because if it was crying, I would have been getting bad news. But it wasn't. So, yeah. so the, it was good news in yeah, the end? Yeah, it was yeah. good news, yeah. yeah. Oh. So, and, and that's why our birds and our frogs and our animals are given to us as totems. Mm. Yeah, because they are technically still people. Yeah. And they're still part of our um, dreaming. Yeah. yeah. And this place here at Bay Got is very special part of the dreaming of Noongar yeah. for this area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thank, you. Memory, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hiya. My name's Marie Taylor, Wajak Baladong Elder, and I'm going to be sharing some of my knowledge along here on the banks of the Swan River that in the olden days the Noongar people called the Beer. And here at Bagup, the place of rushes, we are going to share a little bit of history. My name's Noel Nanup and I belong to the local Wadjuk people on my dad's side. And um, here we are at Bagup, the place of the, the swamp reeds. As you can see, they're everywhere. And this area has always been used by the Wadjuk people. We can go back thousands of years and academia is now comfortable with 63,000 years. And during that time, um, Aboriginal people wandered through here on an annual cycle and there were six seasons. And um, 12 weeks of the year was spent on the coast and as people were leaving the coast and making their way back out, they always travelled through this area. As I sit here and look at the beautiful Swan River behind the trees, I think about the spirituality of Noongar people. And that highlights and goes right back to the story of the rainbow serpent. How he came down, he twisted and he turned and he created the hills and the valleys, the rivers, the ponds and the pool. And then he went over there to Herdsman Lake and Lake Manga. And he sleeps over there today. Shells are actually the serpent's scales, we call it. And you pick them up and look in and you'll see all the colours of the rainbow inside. And people lived in here in complete isolation from the rest of the world for thousands and thousands of years, having this amazing social order, having the marriage laws of who could marry who, and that would keep the gene pools as far apart as possible. Then that six season cycle as they went through on their, their land. Then on top of that, the governance model of the eldership and how decisions were made on behalf of everybody by that eldership. The baseline for that would be the powers of observation. So they knew every person. The generation gap was about 15 to 16 years. So that was possible for seven generations to be alive at the same time. And today you still see Noongar people coming down here and they'll go fishing or they'll go swimming and, or they'll just go and visit places that are special um, to the memory of their family. 